That is our repair. And today I want to talk about some maintenance service. This truck came in yesterday, a 1991 Ford Ranger, and we did an oil change on it, checked all the fluid levels, and I noticed on the battery has a little code, just like this battery does here. And the L stands for the month, the three stands for the year. So L3 would be December of 2013. The battery that's in this vehicle is August of 2005. So this battery is eight years old. Most batteries last four or five years, no problem whatsoever. But eight years, you're working on borrowed time. So to prevent a maintenance, we're gonna replace the battery today. And you wanna have gloves on. You wanna have safety glasses on because you're doing with battery acid. This has a little hold down bracket in the front of the battery. Might not be able to see it with the camera here, but. Then when you're disconnecting the battery, you always want to disconnect the negative battery cable first and put the negative battery cable back on last. And what happens is that prevents it from having voltage spikes and sparks. And then we'll take a little pair of pliers and open this terminal up. This one got crimped in a little bit too far, the last person that changed this battery. And then we'll take the negative one off first. And then we'll go over to our positive one. So a lot of places that change people's oil and stuff, they won't necessarily check the battery. But that's one of the things we do at John Sadler's is we'd look at the battery on every vehicle that comes in to help the customer. So you can see it right here where it says 8-2005. And so that's August of 2005. So that battery's done, had a, had a plenty good life and lasted a long time. But why do you want to let your customer leave with a chance on one day that battery is just not gonna start the car. So you put a new battery in and you know the customer is good for at least four or five years. This particular battery is by a company called DECA and it has a sealed flat top on it. It's made in the United States and uh, it doesn't have, by not having these caps, you won't get any corrosion. You don't need these little felt pads or anything because you won't get corrosion because the top is sealed. And then we're gonna look at the tray where the battery fits in And you can see it's just got a little bit of deterioration. It's not too bad for a 1991 truck. So what I usually do is I take a little bit of 409 and I'll spray the bottom of it down a little bit. And then I'll just wipe it out. It's very important when you install the battery, you want this tray to be clean where it's gonna sit. So there's a little deterioration in here over the years that's got in there, but it, it's not too bad considering the age of the vehicle. And it's got a lip right here, which you can see on the new battery, has a lip. So we're gonna go ahead and set the battery in. And then we'll take our flashlight and we made sure that it's in the little notch where it belongs, where it sits inside there. And then on the holder, it has a, it has a little edge to it where one edge is, is like a little taper and this has a little step on it. And so if you look down inside of here, you can see where the step goes. You can see the two grooves there are made for those two grooves there, and that sits just like that. And the bolt that goes in there, the threads are pretty dried out, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of Zep spray on the threads. Then we're gonna stick this down inside that hole. And 
It's very important to have the battery hold down on the vehicle because the battery is designed not to slide around. If the battery slides around and gets banged around, it will shorten the life of the battery. So a lot of people will change batteries and not secure the battery properly and the battery will fail prematurely because there's nothing to support the battery. So now you can see this battery supported very well. So now we're just going to clean off the top of the terminals a little bit. Even though it's a new battery, we want to make sure it's nice and shiny that it's clean. And then we're going to put the positive post on first like we talked about earlier. And so what we're going to do is look inside of here and you can see how it's just kind of dull, how it's, it's kind of, um, it should be a shiny, it should look shiny like the other post down there. So what we're going to do is clean it up a little bit here. See how it's nice and shiny now? That's what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and set that post on. And we're going to spread this a little bit more because this got closed in too far before so it won't go all the way down now. So you can take a large flathead screwdriver and loosen the nut up and just give a little twist in there. And that will expand the opening enough that you can see the battery post, the cable in actually goes far down on the post now. That's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be flush with the top. The cable end should be farther down below it like it is now. So let me go ahead and tighten this post. And the reason we're putting this positive one on first, because if we put this positive one on last, it'll have a little spark. And we don't want any sparks around batteries. And we're just going to snug it up a little bit and we're going to come back and double check it so I'm not going to tighten it all the way. And we're going to come back to this one on the negative side. You can see it's the same thing. It's very dull in there. And if you look at the post down here on the battery, you can see how it's real shiny. And that's, that's what you're looking for. So you can see how it's nice and shiny now. So we know it's going to have a great connection. Then we're going to set this on the battery. And we're going to take, do the same thing. We're going to open this up a little bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten our nut down. As we tighten the nut down, we don't want this post uh, to get any damage or to be tilted. So I take my thumb and put pressure downward like this, and I put a little pressure upward with my other finger. So as I'm tightening this, I'm keeping the post from getting too much tension on it. Now I'm going to go back to my top post, to my, excuse me, my positive post, and I'm going to make sure that the nut is tight. See, it moved a little bit more. Now I'll go back to my negative one again. And I'll go back one more time to my positive one. I, I learned many years ago that if you don't want to have comebacks in your business and you want to do your business thoroughly, uh, I was taking a class with some airplane mechanics and they checked everything three times. And so what you'll see when I do with a lot of things, I'll check it three times. So I tighten down the bolts, the nuts on the battery, post, and then I recheck them two more times after that, and they moved a little bit more each time. So now I know that that's nice and seated in. I know beyond any reasonable doubt that those terminals are not gonna come loose and cause the customer a problem of not starting or building up correction, corrosion inside there and having a drivability problem some other time. So all we've got left to do now is to put our little pad for the positive side that protects it. Lay our cable back in there like that.
So as you can see, it's not, a, it's not a very big thing to do this. We save the customer an incredible amount of time because what's gonna happen later on, if no one checks this and he's driving down the road and he goes somewhere and he's in the shopping mall or whatever, or doctor's appointment, whatever he's gonna do or going to work and he goes somewhere and the truck won't start, what's he gonna do? He's gonna call AAA or call some towing facility or call a friend and then you just lost hours of your day. So one thing that we do at John Sellers Auto Repair is if you have a problem with a vehicle and, or you're just coming in for service, we always look at the battery. And all batteries will have some kind of a tag like this, some kind of a date code. Uh, some are harder to interpret than others. Some you have to go, um, some Volvo, some Mercedes, some other ones, they have different numbers with different codes. Uh, AC Delco has a different kind of code reading. That you can you can go to YouTube and it'll tell you how to read a lot of the battery date codes if you're not sure how to read them or you can call the manufacturer of the battery they'll tell you how to read them so it's just a little tip from John Sathers if you want to do a good benefit for your customer check the batteries for them when you're doing fluid service and looking things over you want to check the battery condition so why not check the battery age your customers will greatly appreciate it because they won't have breakdowns in between services thank you very much have a nice day